Welcome, everybody. Jason and Alex back for the Sackos. We got your round one playoff starts of the week. Uh, congratulations to everybody that made it this far. It is quite the feat. I was able to make it this far myself in our ultra competitive league. Thanks to a meaningless Amari Cooper touchdown at the end of last night's game. Um, Dobbins didn't come close to 19 and neither did Zeke, but Hey, they ended up in the low teens. I'll take that. Um, Hey, I'm playoff bound, baby. That's the only way to be right now. Alex, are you playoff bound? I don't think you are, buddy. Nope, I'm not. Uh, I'm the Germans have a word called, I believe it's schadenfreude. Yeah. About how like, um, I become happy when other people become miserable. Um, so I just can't wait for you to lose. I know what that feels like because I have a little bit of Schadenfreude right now. Oh man! Oh, you've been living the, you've been living the gut punching fantasy football season. So I almost feel guilty at this 2020. point. Twenty twenty. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's all good. Hey, what we're 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 covering targets uh, or who we think is going to go off this week. I also have a bunch of kind of notes about. You know, maybe we shouldn't be relying on just, hey, I see that this team is fifth against uh, fifth best against tight ends, um, but maybe they've given up a ton of points to the tight end so far this year. Like you can't just take things at face value anymore because we have so much data that some of it might be outdated because of injuries and things like that. And then obviously Jason's going to just going to crush you with all of his studs. Um, So let's get it rolling. Yeah, I value your face. Let's get into it. Welcome to the Fantasy Football Sackos podcast with your hosts, Jason Shellcross and Alex Krobe. Let's go! Playoff time, baby. Let's get into these uh, first round starts of the week here, all right? Let's start off a quarterback, shall we? Oh, baby. Oh, baby, baby. All right. How was I supposed oh, to know? Oh, oh. I, okay. All right. That's how you got married. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Hannah's a lucky lady. Oh, man. All right. We're starting off at quarterback here. My first start of the week. The one, the only. You got to let him cook. He is Russell Wilson. Uh, going up against the Jets in round one. The Jets are giving up the third most fantasy points per game to the quarterback position this season with 22.3. In the last month, they've given up the most fantasy points per game to the quarterback position at more than 26 points on average, which is bananas. Uh, They are also giving up the second most Yards per pass attempt in the league at 7.7. So that's a lot. Jamal Adams is gone, baby. And uh, yeah, you can throw all over the Jets. So I think Russ is going to do that. Uh, They still got a Carson, Chris Carson, that is kind of sort of maybe coming back from injury, kind of like one toe in the pool, see how it feels. Before he jumps in the deep end, he might be in the deep end in this game. I don't know. But uh, I just think that they're going to keep leaning on Russ. I think he's going to have a hell of a game against the New York football Jets, who, you know what? Honestly, maybe they'll be better on defense. It wouldn't shock me. They fired Greg Williams. He's gone. They can't get any worse without him. Like, you know? So. That's that's I just think Russ is going to light him up, quite honestly. I don't know if he'll play in the second half. They could be up by 40. So what can you tell me? Do you like Russ against the Jets or am I alone? Sure. I mean, yeah, no, of course. I mean, how can you not like Russ? I I will say just to throw some caution in the wind, the Seahawks have been kind of weird on the last couple weeks. I don't really know what's. Yeah, like I, I don't really know what's going on. So. Um, you know, the, the last couple of weeks, so they scored 37 against the 49ers. They scored 34 against the bills. So they're, you know, they're cruising right along. And then the last four weeks, 16 against the Rams, 
28 against the Cardinals, which is a good week. Only 23 against the Eagles and only 12 points against the Giants. Um, and so, I, I mean, obviously it seems like they're primed to explode, but um, just like their offense has just kind of been stagnant. I don't know if Russ is dinged up or, or what's going on, but just from like a total points output um, hasn't been there. I, I will say, though, that I mean, the Jets defense is just atrocious, right? So, um, you know, looking at the last four weeks, they've given up an average of 28 points a game, um, which is a lot. Um, that's the uh, seventh most allowed in football over that time period. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if you're going to start everybody against the Jets because you have to. Yeah, uh, I think you're right, though. I mean, but that game, that game against the Giants, how disappointing Ross only completed 27 of 43 pass attempts, um, which is really low for him. Chris Carson, I mean, Carlos Hyde only had two rushing attempts in that game. Carson had 13, turned it into 65 yards. He's averaging five yards a clip. I I don't know why they didn't keep going to him. Um, they wanted to let Russ cook in 27 to 43 for 260, a score, a pick. I mean, the Giants have a good defense. I can't believe that they won that game under Colt McCoy, though. Just absolutely insane for him. Uh, Wayne Gallman is a freaking stud um, for the Giants, but I think that they absolutely and, are able to And the to turn Giants it have a really good defense, too. They do. I when mean, you they, read those scores they're, off, they're, they're good. When you read those scores off, that was my instant reaction. The Rams, top six defense. Cardinals, no. The Eagles, not a great defense. However, and, they did have they did get Darius Slay, and they do have a very good defensive line. Um, but they still scored twenty three points, a um, couple touchdowns, some field goals. But the Giants, uh, I'm surprised that that happened. But what about so? Uh, so while while we're talking about the Giants, just just to bounce bounce around here a little bit. So they're, they're playing Arizona this week, um, and so like, do do you have caution of starting? you know, your, your Cardinals against the giants a week after, you know, they kind of hold Seattle in check. Um, you know, the last four, four games that they've played, they've held their opponents to an average of 16 and a half points a game during that time period. Um, which is the fifth best clip, uh, in the league. Um, so, I mean, do you have concerns about starting Cardinals this week? Because I mean, let's be honest, touchdowns win titles. So if they're only giving up 16, 16 points a week. Um, and let's say they hold the Cardinals under 20 or 23 or, you know, so there's three touchdowns to go around there. Um, you know, I, I, I'm just saying that's a tough matchup. And, and there are some guys that of course you're relying on Kyler and Hopkins, um, uh, potentially Drake. Um, uh, but you know, who else are you going to be starting there? Um, honestly, my biggest concern with Arizona isn't necessarily the matchups as much as it is Kyler Murray's health and the health of his shoulder. Um, he's compiled just 343 passing yards over the last two weeks combined. He only threw for 173 yards uh, in against the Rams. So uh, he's, he only completed about, I mean, it was 21 to 39. So, you know, right at 50% of his passes, Granted, he did have three passing mm -hmm. scores, but I just don't think he's healthy. I don't think his shoulder is right. And for that's the biggest reason I'm worried about the Cardinals. Then you put up, put him up against the Giants. I don't think they're going to be able to run the ball very efficiently against the Giants. And so I think you're going to have Kyler again thrown on a bum shoulder. I'd be worried about starting pretty much everybody if I had to be completely honest. I mean, you are going to start your studs, even DeAndre, and in a day where Kyler Murray only throws for 173 yards, DeAndre still managed eight catches for 50 yards and a score. Um, their tight end popped off a little bit too. Two catches, 60 yards, and two scores. That was interesting for Dan Arnold. But you're starting Kyler if he plays. He's going to play. It's not a question. You're starting DeAndre. Um, what I would say is, I would not start Kenyon Drake and I would not start Chase Edmonds. I wouldn't start him. Um, Kenyon Drake, 10 for 50 in a score last week. Eh? Eh? Yeah. 
He's kind of been eh all year, right? He's um, going to have... Another thing I... I Wait, hold on. Before yeah, we move I on. That, uh, before we move on yeah. to a different team. Kenyon Drake is, I think you would agree, a disappointment this year, correct? From where he was drafted, his ADP in the early to mid-second round. Yeah, I was never going to take him there. You were way higher on him than I was. But that's where he was I, going. I don't have him on any team, thankfully. Yeah, correct. For no reason. Um, He's going to rush for more than 1,000 yards. Do you, like he's, he's at 770 right now. Do you think it's like in memory? That's crazy. One of the most disappointing thousand yard rushing seasons. Um, I mean, I can't think of one off the top of my head. Um, other than Frank Gore probably churned out a thousand <laughs> a couple of years ago. That was super unimpressive too. But but the um, reason is this: I, the guy's I, I only wanted, caught just, seventeen balls. Yeah, that's not enough. No, no, it's not. Kyler runs, but I, I, I feel like I'm, I'm doing everybody a disservice if, if I don't mention to everybody that to make sure to look at weather forecasts. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, especially when it comes to, to what up, Cleveland and, and we might begin some some snow in the Chicagoland area um, or around this weekend. And so what you know, if it's going to rain or snow in Chicago, then it's going to rain or snow out east. So. Um, just just be aware of of what the forecast looks like out out in New York, which is where Arizona is playing. Um, they're projected for for showers uh, Sunday morning, and so depending on if that schedule gets, uh, you know, if if they miss it, shockingly, weathermen miss it more than I miss fantasy prognosticating. Um, you know, they, it, it could be it could be raining during that game, and so that would that would favor you know e- even more. It would say, hey, maybe look at going somewhere else here. Um, but yeah, Kyler Murray's been super disappointing the last couple of weeks. Um, went went up against two really good defenses in New England and and the Rams. Um, but the the Jets aren't much worse than either of them. So um, just just buyer beware on that. I like it. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, it's great to have players that play in domes. Domes are great this time of year. So is. I stadiums in uh south of the mason dixon where it's above freezing um yeah absolutely <clears throat> that brings us to our next recommended player let's stay at quarterback shall we let's move on to ryan Tannehill. ryan tana thrill up against jacksonville in jacksonville gonna be warm weather blue skies gonna be beautiful uh the jaguars are giving up the fourth most fantasy points per game to the quarterback position this season at more than 22 points per game. Um, over the last month, they've given up the seventh most to the quarterback position. Um, on top of that, the Jaguars are giving up the most yards per pass attempt in the league at eight. You throw, you throw the ball against Jacksonville, you get eight yards. That's how it works. Uh, They're also giving up the second highest opponent average team passer rating at almost 106. Ryan Tannehill, I think, is going to have a day against Jacksonville. Um, He had a day this last week. Um, For me, part of the reason why I made it to the playoffs is because of what he did to Cleveland completing 29 of 49 of 45 passes uh, for almost 400 yards and three touchdowns. Um, Man, he's been phenomenal. He had a dip there against uh, in the mid late season. He had a dip there against uh, Chicago, Indy and Baltimore, all kind of back to back. He was scoring in the teens and uh, a little bit less than desired 17-point games against Pittsburgh and Cincinnati. So he was actually dropped in a couple places. Um, But I think he's going to have a great fantasy playoffs, and it's going to start week one against Jacksonville. I would absolutely fire him up everywhere, add him off the waiver wire. He's available in 20% of ESPN leagues. Are you excited for Tana Thrill? Are you Tana Thrilled? Um, I don't know. I, I feel like it's really hard to recommend. And, and 
I've been this way the entire season, and it hasn't really impacted you all that much, right? I mean, Ryan Tannehill's the seventh overall fantasy quarterback this year, which is just shocking to me. I Um, just, how far we've come from the preseason quarterback rankings to now, I called him as a top 10 quarterback coming into this season. I think I had him at eight, and he's at seven, and you thought I was nuts. You had him... (laughs) I remember our initial weekly rankings videos where you would rank him at like quarterback 25. (laughs) Oh, this is schadenfreude, isn't it? All right, Alex, continue. I'm sorry. I just had to pat myself on the back there about good old Tana Thrill. It's really hard to start Ryan Tannehill. Nope. In this matchup. Nope. I I understand why it's not. I get it. I mean, he's thrown a touchdown in every game except for one. But, I mean, don't you just think that Derrick Henry is just going to bulldoze people in the, end, in the end zone? Like, they can only score so many points. So if Derrick Henry is going to have two touchdowns, can Ryan Tannehill have three? I guess so. Okay, it's, I guess it, that's possible. Um, you know, just, just from a sheer mathematics standpoint, what that puts him at 35. Um, another concern that I have, and, and I, I guess I'm just trying to play devil's advocate at least a little bit here is if you have Derrick Henry running the ball as much as he could, and you have James Robinson running the ball as much as he could, it's going to shorten up the game time because the clock's going to be running the entire time. Um, and so Just like theoretically from a game scripts perspective, I would expect the Titans to to blow them out. Um, All of a sudden they they've looked like I I know the Titans gave a ton of points to Cleveland last week, but I don't expect Mike Glennon to to put up that many points. Um, So I I'm just saying, I I think it's really hard to say, Hey, I think, I think Derrick Henry is going to be the number one running back this week. And I also think that Tannehill is going to be a top, you know, eight quarterback this week um because it's hard for both of them to do both things especially because henry's not catching the ball out of the backfield that that's my only concern um J- jacksonville the, the last uh, four weeks is averaging giving up 26 points a game um which is uh three points more than the average uh during that time frame which is right around 23 and a half points a week um so uh, they They've given up 27, 27, 27, and 24 points. So three touchdowns. I'm cool with tacking another one or two on there, which gets you to the three and two potentially. So I mean, maybe it's more likely than I think it is. All right. I don't know where to start here, so I'm just going to start. Um, I think that the reason that Tannehill is going to have a day is because I think they're actually going to need to score in this game. Alex, can you guess over without looking over the last four weeks, how many points per game have the Titans been giving up over the last month? Um, I don't know. Probably a lot. They just got destroyed by Cleveland. So it's probably over 30, 37 and a half points per game is what the Titans are currently giving up which is astronomical. This, their last four games, Colts, or well, I'll start with the most recent. Browns put up 41. Um, actually, no, I, got, I did get that wrong because I, had, I entered the Titans score one. So it's going to be a little bit, it's still above 30, but I entered the Titans score 45 instead of the Colts 26. Yeah, it's, it's th- 30. They're giving up 31 points a game. Thank you. The last four. That's, that's fine. That's fine. It's You're still welcome. 31 points per game. Which is a lot. They still have to score to win. It's the what? it's the third third worst during that time period. For the Wonderful. Record. See, you're the you're the stati- statistician. You keep this you keep this ship running. Um, what I can also tell accounting. you is accounting. There you go. Uh, they are currently the fourth worst team in opponent completions per game at twenty six. Um, They are the 12th worst in opponent yards per pass attempt at seven yards per pass attempt. And while they are one, two, three, four, fifth worst 
on the season in terms of how many fantasy points per game that they're giving up to the quarterback over the last four weeks, they are the second worst averaging 25 fantasy points per game given up to the quarterback position there. They can be passed on. They will be passed on even Mike Glennon, uh, an average mediocre backup quarterback in the NFL is going to be able to pass on the Tennessee Titans this week. Um, I think DJ Chark is a viable flex play if you're desperate um, because of it. I don't know why they aren't playing Minshew other than the fact that I think that they're just trying to tank, quite honestly. Um, But I still feel like between how bad the Tennessee Titans are on defense, how quite honestly miraculously good James Robinson has been and company, that they will be able to keep the game close enough. They they were in the game with the Packers just a few weeks ago that you called that they they would be in the game with. So, yes, it's going to come down yeah, to who's it was co- just a weird week. You could just tell it was a weird week coming, but yeah, I get your point. It's going to come um, down to who scores the touchdowns. They, uh, you know that. That's, yeah the the first the first game they played in week two was thirty three to thirty. Um, Woo. so, I mean, that, that helps support your case at least a little bit. Give me some of that. But, uh, yeah, so I'm excited for Ryan Tannehill. I'm Tana thrilled. Um, fantastic. Let's move on. Shall we? I mean, it's the other, it's the opposite side of the coin. Let's talk about some running backs here. We just talked about Tannehill. You got to talk about Derrick Henry. Um, I think Derrick Henry is going to have a fantastic game as well. The Jaguars are giving up. The you know they're giving up the fourth most fantasy points per game to quarterbacks. Well, they're giving up the fifth most fantasy points per game to running backs so far this season, and the fourth most to the position over the last month. They're seventeenth in opponent yards per rush attempt at four point four, so they're middle of the pack. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if the Titans are able to get up early, and maybe Derrick Henry hammers them away in the fourth quarter. That's kind of what I'm envisioning. Um, we'll see. So yeah, it's, they're going to have to score a ton of points really is what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that neither side plays defense and they just score a crap ton of points. So anything else? Okay. No, I, I mean, I'm, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not going to rehash anything there. Um, fl- flip side of the coin. Just wanted to talk about some, uh, some more teams that maybe you don't want to be starting players on. Um, the most stingy points against team, um, over the last four weeks, um, has been the new Orleans saints. Uh, they've only given up 10, just a, just a hair over 10 points a game. Obviously that includes a, a, um, a game where the other team did not have a starting quarterback. Um, Uh, that also includes two games against the Atlanta Falcons. Um, so, but they, I mean, all of a sudden, they're running the ball more with Taysom Hill. I don't know if Drew Brees is playing. They have not said whether he is or whether he isn't. But if they continue to try to run the ball as much, and by the way, Taysom Hill has looked like a like average, but, but slightly better than anybody thought that he would. Um, getting a full a full plate. Um, and guess what? They they play the Philadelphia Eagles this week. They have a rookie quarterback in Jalen Hurts, who's now starting over Wentz. Um, I mean, I don't know if I'd want to start any Eagles player other than maybe Dallas Goddard. If you're maybe like maybe Zach Ertz, like I, I don't I don't want to start anybody else um, for the Philadelphia Eagles against New Orleans this week. And plus they're in Philly. So, um, yeah, I, I just don't don't like the don't like the Eagles at all, which really probably shouldn't come as a surprise because I don't think anybody should like the Eagles, but just throwing it out there. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you. I mean, if you're if you are it, the teams that would be stuck having to start an Eagles player in their lineup, I don't think would have made it to the playoffs. And if you see like Jalen Rager, Wentz, yeah, or and even the guys that drafted Ertz too, you know, the ultimate let one of the ultimate letdowns of 2020. So I don't, I'm not sure if, yeah. even if you drafted an Eagle, you made it to the playoffs, but if you're somebody that's like, do I want to get cute here and start Jalen hurts? Cause he looked good in, you know, in the garbage time, um, 
start that he had or time he had for Philly in the last, the end of the last game, I would not get cute and play Jalen Hurts against the Saints. I would leave Jalen Rager squarely on your bench. Um, and I would maybe only play Goddard. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm not trying to start anybody against New Orleans, let alone somebody with a first and, start in Hertz. But what else you got? Yeah, we we talk so much about the Andy Reid offense and just the fact that, like, yeah, let's go let's go hire Andy Reid assistants. So the Eagles go and and get Peterson, and the Bears go and get Matt Nagy, and um, all of a sudden Frank Reich leaves Philadelphia after winning a Super Bowl to become. Indianapolis's head coach and the Eagles haven't really done anything. And I mean, the Bears offense most times is a dumpster fire. Um, and so um, maybe Andy Reid is just really like you can't maybe teams should stop trying to duplicate the Andy Reid offense because they can't. So just just wanted to to throw that little dig in at, at my beloved Bears. <laughs> I like it. Um you know, I was going to wait, but since you brought it up, let's talk about those beloved Bears. One of my uh, starts of the week is actually David Montgomery, who goes up against Houston. David Montgomery has 23 plus fantasy points in each of the last two games, set back to back career highs in fantasy points scored, uh, faces Houston this week, who is giving up the second most fantasy points per game to running backs on the season at 31 and a half on average, which is just obscenely high. Um, and they're also giving up the second most opponent yards per rush attempt at almost five. You got to start Monty. He should not be on your bench. I understand if you hate him, the guy's a, an RB one, he's going to finish as an RB one on the season. He's going to finish scoring 15 to 25 points per game over the last month of the season. He, he's a must start everywhere, right? Alex. Yeah. I mean, there's only been uh, one game that the Texans have not given up a rushing touchdown. Um, and that happened to actually be against, um, our boy, James Robinson, uh, which is somewhat mildly surprising, uh, week five. So, I mean, they, yeah. So again, touchdowns win titles. Um, I will say though, that, um, you know, Houston's defense over the last four weeks has been stingier than average, uh, only given up 20 points. Everybody saw what they did to the Detroit Lions on Thanksgiving. Um, so it, it's in Chicago. The like the Bears are toast. Like they are done um, after after losing last week the way they did to the Lions. Um, so I, I would not be surprised to see um, D- Deshaun Watson just destroy the Bears this week um, because of passing on him to, to get mi- our boy Mitchie. Uh, Mitch, Mitch, Mitch. Um, so I, I just don't, um, yes, I think you have to start David Montgomery. He probably scores a rushing touchdown. It seems like the bears have kind of recommitted to the run, um, under the new offensive coordinator who's actually calling the plays now instead of Nagy. Um, so I, I do, I do think that's good. Um, I don't know how comfortable I'd be starting anybody else other than Allen Robinson. Um, and even he, he hasn't been like that great i mean he he is borderline a wide receiver one he's a wide receiver 13 on the year but um you're gonna start him um but other than those two guys that you're not gonna want to start any bears um also just on the flip side of the coin um the bears have given up the the fifth most points um in the nfl over the last four weeks um so where where we thought that they were um kind of being stingy um i mean i would have no issue firing up any houston texans player that you have especially deshaun watson i would not be afraid of that brandon cooks should be fine i would not be surprised to see qt be fine as well um the the running backs ah man i mean that's that's gonna be tough david johnson duke johnson um if you have to rely on them, I guess. Um, but I would, I would try to find somebody else, um, if, if possible, because I, I think this is a Deshaun Watson game, um, where he's really going to try to stick it to the bears. So, um, just running out there, the bears defense has been super forgiving. Um, and, uh, so yeah, start your Houston Texans. Uh, 
Yeah, over the last four weeks, the Bears defense is giving up the fourth most fantasy points per game to the quarterback position. And over that time, the Bears have faced Ryan Tannehill and the Titans, uh, Kirk Cousins and the Vikings, Aaron Rodgers and the Packers, who dropped 41 on the Bears, and then Matt Stafford, who dropped 34. So uh, that's points scored for the team, not fantasy points scored for those individuals. But yeah. Um, so really only one, I would say, Hall of Fame elite quarterback out of those four in Aaron Rodgers, but Tannehill, Kirk Cousins, and Matt Stafford. I thought all... you were going to say Kirk Cousins. <laughs> right, I'm surprised you didn't think I was going to say uh, Tannehill. Oh, but yeah, Tannehill. No, Tannehill he sucked against the Bears, Bears, man. Yeah, yeah but yeah. also f- don't be afraid, even with Fuller back there and Eddie Jackson in that uh, defensive backfield, The Bears are giving up over the last month the third most fantasy points to wide receivers at 47 points to the position. So don't be afraid to start Brandon Cooks. Don't be afraid to start Kiki QT, who had a lovely outcoming uh, in his first start after Will Fuller was suspended last week. So we already talked about it in our waiver show. We're not going to rehash it. If you haven't watched our waiver show, guys. Watch the last podcast. It's great. Um, yeah. And uh, let's get back into these starts, shall we? And if we? you're not watching us on YouTube, then keep listening or go back and listen to it. We're available so many places. Everywhere you'd Whatever. ever want to listen. <laughs> um, my next start is going to be Aaron Jones of the Packers going up against Detroit. Um. He had his first 20 plus point fantasy game against Philly last week since week four against Atlanta Uh, faces the Lions this week. who are giving up the most fantasy points per game to running backs on the season at almost 33 points per game Um, that they've given up the sixth most fantasy points per game over the last month to running backs at 28. Um, However, they're 19th in opponent yards per rush attempt. So middle of the pack as far as opponent yards per rush, but they're just giving up all sorts of fantasy points to running backs. So, um, I mean, if you if you have Aaron Jones, you're going to start him regardless. But man, are you in for a treat in round one of the playoffs? So are you excited for Aaron Jones? Yeah, I mean, the the last time they played was week two, and Aaron Jones had a, a very small, uh, he had a rough day with only 43 fantasy points and half PPR. Oh, is that it? Um, so, yeah, I, yeah, that's all. Um, so, yeah, he um, he has those games where he just destroys people. Um, it would seem like he's probably going to, to destroy, destroy Detroit, which is for some reason difficult for me to say. Um, I, were you watching the the game against Philadelphia the other day when he broke that long run? I um, did watch that long run. I they, tweeted it. They sh- they showed whoops. Uh they showed the the press box afterwards. Uh, or not the press box, but they showed the like offensive coordinator afterwards and he was wearing a mask and I could still read his lips because Through? of the way that his arms were like like he was doing this and it it seemed like he was saying it's about time or like finally broke a long run or we finally got it um and so i i would not be surprised just to see them um you know maybe maybe they figured it out or they'd been preaching something in practice and or and somebody finally made a block um aaron jones is is skill wise uh one of the top five backs in the league just in what he can do um receiving out of the backfield or or running the ball he still has not had more than 18 carries in a game um so there there is a a jamal williams um side of this that that could suck away um and as they try to continue to keep aaron jones fresh but um and also aaron Rodgers. so like the best it's to me like the best goal line back in football this year has been Devontae Adams. Like it, it's been crazy how they get close to the goal line and they just throw the ball to Devontae Adams. Um, I mean, it's possible that Aaron Jones could have had like five to seven more touchdowns if they would have turned around and give him the ball instead of throwing it. So um, hopefully they turn around to give him the ball this week and he'll be uh, very nasty. Yeah. Um, 
that run was incredible last week against Philly. What he broke six tackles on that what seventy seven yard run, and one of the got two of the tackles were a tackle attempts were by the same uh, defensive player. Like, oh he, man, that's tough. He's he is a surefire what top five draft pick for next season, don't you think? Top six. It depends on where he ends up. Um, I mean, you had him ranked as your like 18th best running back coming this season. If we're going to rehash that, what me? Um, I wouldn't with, do that. With really? Hill stuff. Huh. Um, I believe I had him at 11, um, to start the year. Um, I, 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 I don't know. Wins. It depends on if he resigns with the Packers and if he, if he goes somewhere else, then it'll be really interesting. I mean, personally, I would love to see him be on the Texans. Um, I, that would be that would be fantastic with with him and Watson. Um, so I'm just saying that that would be great. Yeah, the Texans do need a running back extremely badly. Um, but I don't know. I would be shocked if he didn't resign. You know, Aaron Rodgers wants him there, so um, I'm gonna assume he stays there. But we'll see. Now, aren't the Packers starting Jordan Love next year? Oh, there we go. There it Sorry. is. Shout out, shout out Jordan Love. Oh my goodness. All right, let's move on to some receivers. First up, Keenan Allen going up against Atlanta. Uh, revenge game of sorts for the Chargers after a huge blowout loss to the Patriots. Um, the Falcons are the ultimate get right game, giving up the second most fantasy points per game to receivers at 43 and the third most opponent yards per pass attempt at seven and a half um you got to be excited for keenan allen and justin herbert um i think keenan allen's gonna have a day i think herbert's gonna absolutely turn it around and we 14 so i'm excited to see what they do against the atlanta falcons what do you think about their uh prospects against the falcons this week um they should be pretty good. Um, this is another offense where, you know, they might have gotten figured out um, at least a little bit the last couple of weeks. The the Bills held them to only 17 points. The Patriots good obviously defense. held them to zero. Good defense. I don't know if the Bills is a good defense. They're me- mediocre. Um, Atlanta over the last uh, four weeks has uh, given up 19 points, 19 and a half points a game. Uh, that's seventh best during that time period. Um, so just saying it, it seems like, you know, new coach, new attitude down down in Atlanta. Um, I, I know that, um, you know, they during that. So during that period, they played the Broncos. They played the uh, the Saints twice with Taysom Hill, and then they absolutely destroyed the Raiders uh, a couple weeks ago, which is yes, still mind did. blowing to me. Uh, uh, and only giving up six points, so um, yeah, I I would expect Keenan Allen to be just fine. I mean, he's a he's a top ten lock every week uh, in targets. It seems like at this point, um, playing in LA uh, weather should be perfect. So uh, yeah, fire up Keenan Allen like it are you excited for anybody on the opposite side of that ball are you excited for julio or ridley um and what they might be able to do against I the mean, chargers I think you, yeah i think you have to be um the chargers have given up the most points uh over the last four weeks um so how how are you not going you know the question comes down to is can you so obviously you're gonna start ridley you're gonna start julio um, I understand why you'd start Matt Ryan in the matchup. For me, it comes down to can you trust Todd Gurley? Um, I, that's a really tough one because if you're still in at one point this season, you were probably reliant on Todd Gurley. He's a top 15 back so far this year, even with basically not playing the last four weeks. Um, one of them was a bye week. Um, his touchdown dependency was so high and it's kind of dried up Um, eight carries each of the last two weeks, one catch each of those weeks. Um, It's a good matchup. Girly practice this week. 
but I, I don't, that's to me, that's one of the hardest starts of the week um, is can you start and can you start Todd Gurley? Uh, the, the chargers give up the 10th most points to running backs. Um, so it's a great matchup. Um, but I, I, I would try to look elsewhere other than, other than Mr. Gurley, but it's, it's possible that he's the one that scores a bunch of points if they got goal line carries. So, uh, if, if you have to start him, I get it. Um, I would try to look elsewhere. Um, it's possible that he scores some points, but I would say the answer is unequivocally stay away, avoid, do not start Todd Gurley. Um, he is dealing with a knee injury. Their coach said that their goal was only to use him between or in the red zone and to use Brian Hill and Ito Smith um, else, you know, between the 20s. And so he's not going to see the ball at all until and only if they get into the red zone. And so Ooh. it's just not. It's not great. You know, the it, the result of it is this. Gurley had eight carries for 16 yards last week against the Saints. Edo Smith, eight for 36. Brian Hill, five for 18. So it's the Edo Smith and Brian Hill show between the 20s. And then they bring in Gurley from the 20 on in. And he's averaging, he averaged two yards per carry last week against the Saints. Granted, the Saints are very good against the run as it is. But he's having those knee issues. He's only going to get red zone and goal line carries. If his knee's bothering him during the game, I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up splitting those in some sort of way. He's completely touchdown dependent, and I would not play him. What I think the better stretch play question on that team is, is Russell Gage all of a sudden fantasy relevant again now that you have a healthy wide receiver core? Russell Gage had eight targets against the Saints, secured four of them for 50 yards and a score. Is Russell Gage maybe flex worthy? Eight targets, maybe. Hard, hard to know. Like maybe. I mean, I, I would. Oh man, I mean, I, I've not done my flex rankings yet. By the way, they will be available at the fantasyfootballsackos.com. Jason has his done. Um, I'm a. I don't know. I mean, would you put Gage above Gurley in a flex ranking situation? I don't know. Um, because those those touchdown that touchdown potential. If you're going to tell me that he's only going to get the goal line carries, I think they're going to move the ball enough against one of the worst defenses in the NFL, where you could take your shot on saying, "Yeah, I'm banking on him getting the end zone." Um, so that that's that's my perspective. Although, if we're really being honest, the the best fantasy player for Atlanta this way or this week is probably going to be Young Way Koo because the the Falcons have a terrible red zone offense and they're going to move the ball up and down the field and young way. Who's going to kick like eight field goals. He is a man. Oh man. All right. So you asked me what I would do with Gurley right now. I have Todd Gurley ranked in my rankings, which are available on our website, the fantasy football sackos.com. He is my running back 38 overall flex player. 90. <laughs> yeah, I think that, I think that's too low, honestly. Um, I mean, maybe I, I get, I get, I, I get it, but I, I think, I think he'll score a touchdown this week. Gurley with, let's see, what did he have? He had a whopping two and a half points against the Saints, zero points against Vegas, three and a half points against the Saints the first time. So six. Yeah, those are those are all really those are really good defenses, and he didn't play against Vegas. So, yeah. like, are you really are you really going to bank, you know, against one of the top defenses against the run, where, you know, all of a sudden he's playing just a super leaky defense? Like, I, I don't Maybe. think he's a terrible play this week, honestly. You tweak that knee on the first time he touches the ball. Oh, Todd, Toddy boy. I can't wait to talk about him in the off season. I hope he retires and just like figures it out. Gets a healthy knee. Oh man. He's How did we end up there? Man. Uh, 26 with one knee. All right. Next up we have Adam Thielen and Justin Jefferson versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. 
who are the Suckaneers. The Suckaneers against wide receivers. Uh, Tampa Bay um, is 24th against wide receivers currently giving on the season in terms of fantasy points, giving up more than 40 points per game to the position. They are no. dead last over the last month, giving up almost 60 fantasy points per game to wide receivers. So Tampa Bay can be passed on. They have a couple young uh, starters for them. Uh, the Chiefs made them look like a fool, especially Tyree Hill in the first quarter of that game, getting 200 yards and a couple scores. Um, but in the last month, they've played the Saints, Panthers, Rams, and and Chiefs. So that's good for 60 fantasy points per game to the wide receiver position. I think that their strength is against the run. So I worry about Dalvin Cook in this game, but I think that they're going to have to pass to move the ball. I think Jefferson and Adam Thielen are going to have phenomenal games against the Bucks. So what do you think about uh what do you think about the Vikings up against the Bucks this week in Tampa? So sunshine. Putting all, putting all your hopes and dreams on Kirk Cousins, not just getting Having one of those games where, uh, uh oh, you mean uh, quarterback uh, eleven, Kirk oh Cousins? Boy. Yeah, you're right. That's him. That's the guy. QB one, Kirk Cousins. That's hilarious. Twenty twenty, man. Um, so maybe. Um, I mean, t- Tampa Bay has been well. So all first of all. All of those numbers that you just read off are obviously super inflated because of Tyree Kill and Kansas City and what they did to him where, I mean, Mahomes threw for 360 yards in the first half and Tyree Kill put up 51 fantasy points in one of those weeks. So, like, just that alone obviously bumps it up. Justin Jefferson and Thielen are both very good. They're not Tyree Kill Hold fast on. or good. What so you I, said to me yep. the other week when I saw, when I tried to point out the misnomer that was a, jo, a Joe Mixon inflated week where he had 40, and I said, well, if you take that out, then he, he's just average at best. And <laughs> your point was the points still happened. See, that's all I'm saying is, Tampa Bay was bad enough that that game still happened. And so, yes, Kirk Cousins is not Pat Mahomes. That is not going to happen in the first quarter of this game. But they are bad against the pass. Okay. Um, I mean, they, they are. Um, but the Buccaneers are coming off of a bye week where, you know, they were able to kind of take a look at maybe some of the things that they were doing, um, both on the offensive side of the ball and the defensive side of the ball. Um, and so there is the potential in this game. Like, would you be surprised if if Tampa Bay just came out and just absolutely royally kicked their ass? I mean, at one point this year, Tampa Bay had the had the best DVOA in football. And then they obviously got destroyed in a couple games. Um, so I, um, I, that New Orleans game really, I feel like threw them off where, you know, it was a Sunday night game. They're all jacked up for it. And then they scored like three points. Um, I, I just would not be surprised if Tampa Bay came out really pissed off. Um, they ran the ball more and got, got their offense kind of figured out hopefully over the over the bye week um so that that's my main concern is that um you know Minnesota has been been playing every week here for a while um their bye week was in week 7 um and Tampa Bay's fresh um at home in the sun where where the the Vikings are not used to playing um that that can be a that, that can be a, a tough game yeah, I I wouldn't be surprised at all if Tampa Bay comes out and just kind of takes it to them. Um, Tampa Bay, you know, their defense is going to mess with the one thing that Minnesota does exceptionally well, um, I think, better than a lot of teams, and that's with Dalvin Cook running the ball, setting up the pass, setting up those play actions that get those receivers wide open. Tampa Bay is has the fewest opponent yards per rush attempt in the league at 3.3. Um, 
I'm worried about Dalvin this weekend. I, I think that he could be a running back too and disappoint a lot of players. Um, hopefully he gets into the end zone for you. I wouldn't be surprised at all if Tampa Bay, you know, does really well. I, um, I, I wouldn't be shocked. So what, what, do you know what the spread is on this game offhand? Not to put you on the spot. Uh, uh I do. I do not. Uh, I can look it up as you're figuring you th- it out. I would also, uh, I would, TV I would spread. So tuberculosis pops up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, t- 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 Tampa, Tampa Bay is minus four and a half. I was uh, going to put them so at five. Over a field goal favorite. Do you think that they yeah. cover? Yeah, I, I would take them to cover that. Um, also, I mean, Delvin Cook has got the receiving um, floor uh, on him. So, I, I, I mean, I would be shocked if he's still not a, a, a low end one. Um, at worst, just because I could see him catching some balls out of the backfield to to still have that, um, you know, still have a decent week. But yeah, I mean, to your point, Thielen, Jefferson, sure. I mean, they, they've both been um, as good as they possibly can be. Uh, Jefferson's wide receiver four on the year. Thielen is wide receiver six on the year. Um, damn, man. Where we, where do you would have seen that offense? Where are you going to rank Jefferson next year? Top ten? No. At wide receiver four right now. I mean, God, I don't, I don't, I can't even fathom that right now. I got to think about it more. Top fifteen? Top twenty? Probably top fifteen. I mean, they're they're like. You know, would you put him over Kenny Galladay, a healthy Kenny Galladay? Like there, there's a, like that, that would be like my first question is, you know, Galladay was a top six wide receiver last year, has been basically hurt all year and, you know, in a pass happy offense potentially. Um, so yeah, I, that would be like my first comp would be, you know, Justin Jefferson and Kenny Galladay of. Ooh, who who would I like more going forward? Um, because all of a sudden, like I could see them being pretty close next year, but that's for a different time. Yeah, fun fun to talk about though. No, nonetheless. All right, moving on, shall we? My next, I don't know, stud start of the week is Corey Davis going up against Jacksonville. We've already talked about the Titans kind of ad nauseum. However. I want to point out Corey Davis and not AJ Brown. AJ Brown is hurt. AJ Brown has an injured ankle that he was able to come back in and play on. Um, But, you know, that's kind of fairly commonplace where people get hurt, but they still have the adrenaline. So they're able to finish the game. And then Monday comes and the swelling comes and all of a sudden you're questionable and you might be, you might play, you might not. AJ Brown did not. Here comes the swell. Do, 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 do. Here comes the swell. Oh no. The blood rush. I can't believe you got there. Oh, that's great. I wasn't sure how far it was going to go, but you took it all the way to the freaking. Oh, that was wonderful. Oh, man. There's um, nothing worse than blood rush into your swollen ankle. Do, 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 do. Um, so, AJ Brown's hurt. He might play, but if he does play, he's not going to be at 100%. Um, with a bum wheel, Corey Davis is the 14th highest scoring receiver in fantasy football over the last five weeks. Bonafide wide receiver two. Jacksonville, like we mentioned before, giving up the fifth most fantasy points per game to receivers on the year, 40 at more than 41, and the most opponent yards per pass attempt at eight, like I mentioned before. So I think Corey Davis with or without AJ Brown is going to have a phenomenal game and could potentially finish as a wide receiver one this week. So I hate it because I'm playing against him this week in my uh, first round of the fantasy playoffs. But uh, I think he's going to do big things against Jacksonville. So that's my Corey Davis plug. Yeah. Very surprising wide receiver 25. I'm actually surprised he's not higher than AJ Brown. Um, on the year, um, just AJ with AJ's Brown's injuries, 17, but if it just, 
Yeah, it just feels like Corey Davis would would have a a better fantasy year going um just abstractly and um because I, I feel like my maybe my expectations were just so high for AJ Brown. Um being wide receiver 17 is about where we had him ranked. Um but yeah, he'd be a lot better if he didn't miss a couple games. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see kind of how that shakes out. It seems like uh you know Corey Davis is going to be a free agent at the end of the year. Um, so it'll, it'll be interesting to see if he resigns there, if he goes somewhere else and, and kind of what that means for AJ Brown, because if he didn't resign, then I mean, AJ Brown could be a top five guy going forward. Um, but if Corey Davis does stay there and, and keep him, I, th- I think that keeps them in check a little bit. Yeah, I, I think I agree with that. Corey Davis is my wide receiver 15 this week. Um, I am excited for what he can do. He is my flex ranked 28th overall. So excited for that game. It'll be interesting to see if he pulls, you know, he, he just, he was watching what uh, Devonte Parker did last year. He said, Oh, Hey, I'm coming up at the end of my contract. I've never done anything thus far in my NFL career. Why not have a breakout year no in kidding. my last year? You know, but all right. Get that cash. There you go. Secure the bag. Next up, we have T.Y. Hilton and the Colts going up against the Las Vegas Raiders. Las Vegas, ninth worst against receivers in fantasy points over the last four weeks, giving up 40 fantasy points per game. Hello, Atlanta. <laughs> uh, T.Y. had 11 targets last week and touchdowns in each of the last two games. Vegas is tied for 18th in opponents yards per pass attempt. So middle of the road at 6.9. Um, TY all of a sudden 11 targets. I don't, I don't know what that's coming out of, but if that could be a thing. I w- I think he's a great flex play this week. Um, pro- I mean, that's not where you drafted him. Let's be honest, but he was also dropped in a lot of leagues. So if he's out there, and you're desperate for a flex, I feel like you could easily uh, plug and play T.Y. He is rostered in only 47% of leagues. So I think he's uh, plug and playable. The artist formerly known as T.Y. Hilton has uh, apparently um, been found. Um, I uh, I mean, for, for a couple of weeks there, it was Michael Pittman Jr. Um, you know, the last... Oh, specifically the last week against Houston, um, who, um, you know, is is leaky uh, to to the wide receivers and obviously to running backs as well as as we've covered at nauseum here. Um, I. Uh, he's one where you wouldn't want to get burned and play him. Um, I, I, I get the I get the ranking. Um, I get the Raiders have given up basically 30 points a game the last four weeks. Um, they got gashed by Jamison Money Crowder last week for a couple scores early. Um, Ty kind of fits a similar build to Jamison Crowder. Um, so I I get it. Um, I, I think it's flip a coin uh, of who who's going to be more productive between Pittman and and Ty. I feel like it just kind of depends on how uh, Rivers is feeling on a given day. Um, and don't forget to like the feeling. Raiders give up the, <laughs> the, they give up the fifth most points to running backs. Um, and so, you know, are they just going to focus on Jonathan Taylor and Naheem Hines out of the backfield and, um, you know, just destroy them on the ground? Um, whatever they decide is, is what they, you know, who knows with, with Frank Reich's offense. Um, so yeah, I, I think TY is a, an okay flex play. Um, hopefully you have somebody better than him. Um, yes. Cause he, I feel like he, he, he has a, he has a mediocre ceiling, um, and a very low floor. Alrighty. Moving on. Our last start of the week is Logan Thomas at San Francisco had nine targets, nine catches, 98 yards and a score against Pittsburgh, who was number one against tight end going into last week. 
Um, he's rostered in 36% of leagues, 13 targets over the last two weeks. Alex Smith loves him. Logan Thomas is a for- former quarterback himself. Um, yes, the San Francisco matchup isn't phenomenal, but I think he is kind of, I don't want to say matchup proof, but I think he will have volume in this game. I think Alex Smith likes throwing to him. Um, I don't know if I would, I'm going to call nine catches for 98 and a score. That would be incredible. Um, but I, I think Logan Thomas is a fine add off the waiver wire. If you're desperate for a tight end and you're sick of the Austin Hooper experience, like I am. Yeah. And, and keep in mind too, the 49ers are one of those teams where, Hey, they've been pretty stingy, but they actually haven't been. Um, they've given up they're they're tied for giving up the seventh most points over the last four weeks. Um, they have 34 to the Packers, 27 to the saints. 20 to the Rams and the Bills uh, obviously got him for 34 the other day. Um, and and if Antonio Gibson's not going to play, which he looks doubtful to play. He there's um, no way. You know, they're going to go to more. Yeah, they're they're going to go to a short passing attack. So there's going to be a lot of McKissick. That's going to be a lot of Logan Thomas. Um, I would not be surprised to see him at double digit targets again this week. Ooh, that'd be nice. That'd be so nice. All right. Well. That brings us to Newsy Stuff. I have a little bit of newsy stuff for you, Mr. Alex Krog. Today, let's do it. Colin Coward, uh, radio sports commentator person, uh, said that, said, quote, I like baseball playoffs, but so many baseball fans are all into these stats. You know, you're on base, your whip. By the way, I got I got plenty of whips at home that don't have anything to do with baseball. Anywho, I like winning. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> wow. Alex, that how many is... how many whips do you have at home? Are you counting? So, well, no. So I'm trying to figure out where to take this. So (laughs) growing up on a... (laughs) Growing up on a farm, um, there were like... You wouldn't consider it a whip, but like you would like... You could use it to like hit a a horse. Um, So, So I mean, I grew up around whips um, and chains, no handcuffs. (laughs) um so at our house currently we have zero okay um all the comments all the comments on the video are about i'm sure he's talking about how many cars he has i'm sure he's talking about how many cars he has (laughs) oh stop it (laughs) oh stop it no i don't have any whips speaking of that i don't have any whips or chains i have cars did i I don't know if I ever did I ever sing my uh my Lamar Jackson song? No, but please do. So like I I wrote something down. It was uh this is from May 15th at 1:07 in the morning. I couldn't sleep because it's oh, going through my head. This is going to um, be great. And so like the whips and chains, handcuffs, making the booty up with like that's, you know, that song. Um of tell me what's your fantasy by um by Ludacris. Uh and so this is tell me what's your fantasy uh by Ludacrog. Um so uh here we go. Uh this is for you, Lamar Jackson. <laughs> I wanna dra- 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 draft you at the end of the first round, then I wanna watch you run a pass all, all, all over the Browns, and I wanna ah ah you run so fast, I just can't believe that I wanna make you the leader of my fantasy team (laughs) that was good it was better than i thought it was gonna be i didn't know what to expect that was fantastic yeah wow that's a plus if that doesn't get people to subscribe to our youtube channel then i don't (laughs) know what freaking will you know what in the comments below please let us know to what not what to what song you would like alex to rap to next Okay, first off, please. Second I'm, of I'm all, mo- 
more than happy to do it. That has earned a like and a subscribe and a ring the bell on whatever platform you're w- listening to and also on YouTube. Like, let's be honest. Um, and it flies in the face. Like 50 seconds and hear it again. Oh, I'm going to. I'm going to live off of that. Second of all, our freaking media department is going to go ape shit with that whole experience that just happened. And that whole rap flies in the face of our Twitter poll today where uh in an effort to get more yeah, youtube followers you people we ran a poll on twitter trying to get insight into why people haven't followed us yet and 69 <laughs> percent of those responding said that the reason that oh, they haven't followed nice. said that the reason that they haven't followed us on youtube is because alex is a ginger so alex <laughs> even though you are a ginger you're a fantastic one and you carry the show and thank you for that wonderful rap. Uh, it was amazing. So I think I that hate those 69% of people, I hate them. Yeah. The 69 percenters. Uh, that that does it for those us. Not nice people. No, that's mean. That does it for us. All right. Not uh, nice. let's transfer to the social media page. Thank you guys so much for listening. Please like, subscribe uh give us a 15 million star rating on on itunes that way we can be on more people's podcast notification phone list things and be heard by people that'd be cool all right have a good night yeah you did not you did not see that song coming and i just i mean one can you imagine what was going on in my head at one in the morning to be like Oh, I got to write this down right now. I just got to write it down. You were just excited. You were, I couldn't even believe that that whole thing just happened. That was fantastic. It happened. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Football Sackos podcast. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at the FF Sackos.